when it comes to handling big data to get insights or take business decisions, data analytics and visualization are essential parts in the knowledge discovery journey and in presenting final discoveries. While Python is a cross-platform, free, and very flexible language that has an active support community, Python also provides many powerful libraries for data analytics and visualization. The libraries we're representing can be used separately, but integrating two or three of these libraries together can be very powerful. For example, Pandas can be used by the other libraries to design data structure, while Matplotlib can be representing the findings of Excel Wings, NLTK, and NetworkX. Welcome to the Pandas libraries. Panda is a Python package which provides fast, flexible, and expressive solutions to handle real-world data analysis with Python. Let's load our data from a CSV file. We can also do it using an Excel file and then run the function. As you can see, we get the display of all the rows and columns in the data set. We scroll down to see all the values and move to the right to see the full length of the columns. You can also create your own data by creating a data dictionary. And as you can see, the table shows the numbers introduced in this dictionary. Now, let's see how to manipulate all this data we have loaded. To see the dimensions of the data frame, use the shape function. If you want to have a quick look at the first and last few values, use the head and tail function respectively. If you just wanted to check a range of values, introduce that range into square brackets. And to look at the name of the columns, use the columns function. Pandas libraries offer basic operations such as max to return the maximum value of a given column or to filter a given specific parameter, in this case, the daisy drain. But if you wanted to know the mean wind speed, no problem. Pandas has the solution. Be careful and don't get too blown away. By using the mean function, you get the average temperature. But if you want to avoid this tedious process of individually analyzing variables, we can quickly get the main metric in the, with the describe function, which will return the set of useful metrics which will allow us to scrutinize the data in one second. Every data scientist's nightmare is missing data. With Pandas, we can run a simple function called fillNA that will allow us to input a given value for every NA record found in the dataset. Excel supports several automation options using VBA. User-defined functions are relatively simple in that they take inputs and return a single value. The powerful option is a macro that can automate just about anything Excel can do. Even though UDFs and macros are powerful, they are still written in VBA, and there are times when it would be useful to bring the power of Python to our Excel-based solution. That's where Excel Wings comes into play. Excel Wings is a Python library that integrates Python with Excel. To use Excel Wings, we first import Excel Wings library. Then we can create a new Excel file or use an existing one to create list on it. Once we run the code, an Excel file appears with the list. We can also create NumPy array. In this code, we created the 3x3 dimensions NumPy array. Same thing when we create Panda data frame or Panda series. We find them on the created Excel file. We can also integrate Matplotlib with Excel Wings to generate desired plots. Natural Language Toolkit was developed by Steven Bird and Edward Luther and is a really powerful library for natural language analysis that is based on natural language processing. So let's start to show some examples about Natural Language Toolkit. The first one is the text token usher that allow you to divide a text in the different sentences that compose it. In a similar way, we have word organizer, but instead of sentence, we are going to work with the words that are composing this text. In another way, we have the steaming that is going to obtain the steam of a verb and is really useful for natural language processing models where you have to 
uh, train all the variations of the verbs and with this tool you don't have to do that but let's apply this toolkit on a real data and for the real data we are going to analyze the tweets from twitter that are talking about trump so what i did here is to apply the word tokenizer in order to obtain all the words that compose the tweets we are going to store this in a list and we are going to apply a stop words to clean this data to finish we are going to put a frequency plot and you can see here some people say about trump some people say that is his school the lord think that it's disgusting, racist, homophobic, there's different opinion about him. But let's go further, let's go analyze 10,000 tweets. This time I saved the tweets in a CSV in order to create a model that and the negative. That's all for Natural Language Toolkit, so let's go for the next library. NetworkX is a Python library for studying graphs and networks. It's a free software released in April 2005. It was released by Eric Hagberg, Peter Swart, and Dan Schultz. There are two components in networks, nodes, which are set of objects that are connected together, and edges, which are the connections or the links between the nodes. Network X is suitable for operations on large real world graphs, graphs that can reach up to 10 million nodes and 100 million edges that is due to its dependence on a pure Python dictionary data structure. Network X can be used for different types of analysis. For example, marketing analytics, where network graphs can be used to figure out the most influential people in a social network. Supply chain, where graphs help in identifying optimum roads for your delivery trucks and in identifying locations for warehouses and delivery centers. Here is an example of creating a network graph. First, we import the library NetworkX as NX. The graph shows a group of students and how they are linked together. Here is another graph showing two groups and how they are linked. Now let's take a look at how to plot with Python. Matplotlib is a Python two-dimension plotting library and can be used in a lot of environments. For simple plotting, the Pyplot module provides a MATLAB-like interface, and for the power user, you have full control of everything via an object-oriented interface or via a set of functions familiar to MATLAB users. Everything in MATLAB is organized in a hierarchy. At the top is the MATLAB state machine environment. The next level down is the first level of the object-oriented interface for a few functions. For even more control, the Pyplot level may be dropped completely. What are the parts of a figure? You have the world figure. The axes are what you think of as a plot. It is the region of the image with the data space. You have the axes are the number line like objects. And you have the artist, basically everything you can see in the figure is an artist. What kind of inputs do you need to plot functions? Just think about arrays. Look at the code to see how a panda state frame is converted. Maplotlib, PyPlot and PyLab. How are they related? Maplotlib is the whole package and the other two ones are modules. Piper provides the state machine interface to the underlying object-oriented plotting library. Look at this sample. There are two coding styles that are officially supported in Maplotlib. The fastest for coding one is Piper style. Look at the import script and an example of the figures you Sometimes can Sometimes you find yourself making the same plots over and over again, but with different datasets, which leads to needing to write specialist functions to do the plotting. The recommended function signature is something like whether exploring data in interactive mode or programmatically like saving lots of plots, rendering performance can be a painful bottleneck in your pipeline. There are four ways to reduce rendering time. Line segment simplification, market simplification, splitting lines into smaller chunks and using the fast style. There are so many plots you can do with Matplotlib. Just look some examples. We hope this Python library will help you in the future. Enjoy it! And that's all from Group A. Bye!